Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. The Ludum Dare. Have you heard of it? Well, if you're an independent games developer or an indie game aficionado, then the answer to that question is probably yes. However, many of you out there will say, nope, never heard of it, no idea what it is. And that's okay. Ludum Dare is apparently a Latin phrase which means something along the lines of to give games. And while the pronunciation may be in question, is it Ludum, is it Ludum, is it Dare, it's Latin after all, the important thing is the event itself and that it exists. The first Ludum Dare took place in April 2002, and so that means the most recent edition of the Dare, Ludum Dare 23, marked the 10th anniversary of the event. In its current incarnation, the Ludum Dare consists of a 48-hour game design competition where individual game designers are given a theme, voted on ahead of time by the community, and a weekend in which to create a fully fleshed out game for judging. Now, if the pressure of competition isn't quite your thing, then go ahead and team up with some of your friends for the 72-hour game jam. It's just a more relaxed event that happens at the same time as the competition. Still uses the same theme, but you can team up with your friends to make an interesting game with an extra day thrown in there for those of us who would certainly need that. In addition to being the 10th anniversary, Ludum Dare 23 was also one of the most prolific dares to date, with 1,400 games being submitted between the competition and the jam. With that many contenders, you might imagine that it can be hard to get noticed. So I put an all call out to my minuscule following on Twitter, asking any game developers who might want to have their games featured to let me know. I got three replies, and those are the games that you're going to see first in this video. After that, I'll give you four games that I found while looking around on my own. I would highly suggest that you dedicate a few hours to perusing the Ludum Dare website and just have a little fun playing some amazing games from some up-and-coming developers. So without any further ado, let's take a look at some of the games of the Ludum Dare 23. Let's start things off with our Twitter submissions, and in no particular order, we'll start with Overpopulous from Make a Game. Now, this was part of the jam, meaning they had the extra time and the ability to get multiple people involved on it. And man, this game really, really shines, let me tell you. It's one of the only games I played that had a fully fleshed out intro cutscene that gave you the whole story. What is that story? Well, you're seeing it on your screen now, but essentially your planet is overpopulated and you have to spread your folks to the far-flung reaches of the galaxy. You're colonizing other planets. How are you doing that? You're doing that by literally using a rocket to propel your planet out into space. You fly around, you bounce into other planets. If you encounter unpopulated planets, you deposit some of your folks there. If you encounter populated planets, well, give them a visit. It gives you a little bit of extra boost for your blast, and it is a really, really addicting game. You're bouncing around trying to keep your blast meter full so that you can constantly stay in motion. If you ever do run out of momentum, well, your quest is over. I really enjoyed this game. It was really addictive, and it was so well done that I would say it's ready to go on to Congregate or Newgrounds right now. I mean, it's that fully fleshed out and realized. Wonderful game. Make a game really hit one out of the park here with this one. And it is definitely setting the bar high for the rest of the games that we're going to look at today. Up next is another Twitter entry. It is Tiny World War from Jimmy Pollen, a.k.a. Super Fluid Games. This was a competition entry, so again, 48 hours, and it was just one man himself making this title. This game is a tiny world war. You play a little soldier who's trying to get across a battlefield, and it's pretty simple, but it's a lot of fun. I really like the intro, the way that they introduce the mechanics to you, sort of a text drill sergeant kind of drilling into you exactly what you need to do. You get out there, you run around, you dodge bullets, you crawl in the muck and the mud, and you try to get to the end to victory. It's essentially a timed game, uh, procedurally generated levels, and you're trying to get to the end as fast as you can. Try to beat your own time, get your bronze star, your silver star, your gold star, all that good stuff. It's a nice, simple, straight-to-the-point game. It's not going to give you hours of enjoyment, but it's certainly worth 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time. Really have to applaud Superfluid on this. They did go out after the competition was over, as oftentimes uh, these guys will do, and make a little tweak based on what folks suggested on their game page. And in this case, the suggestion was, give us some way to attack back. 
and what he did was he allowed you to dive at the enemies and kill them in that way. So the post-comp version is available as well as the original version that he submitted for the competition, so check them both out. And all of the information, of course, is going to be in the description below, so look for Tiny World War and check that out. Our final Twitter entry is Lighthouse by Gritfish. This is a 72-hour game jam entry, and it's a puzzle game where you play as a sentient lantern who is collecting fireflies. You're slowly ascending a sort of an overworld map of buildings. Every now and then you encounter a door. You enter that door, and inside you are faced with a puzzle. You must collect three fireflies by rotating the level. Really interesting concept. This is the sort of thing that I could see being made into a fully fleshed out game with some time and some added mechanics. I think you could do more with the Outer World map, and you could really make this an interesting title. All in all, I had a really fun time. I did hit some puzzles I couldn't solve, but there should apparently be solutions to most puzzles. I probably just was not able to wrap my mind around it. If it does get too difficult, there's a reset button that will give you a new puzzle. They are procedurally generated as far as I understand it, and some of them are damn challenging. So if you're in for it, if you're ready for it, Lighthouse, Puzzler, Spin Levels, Collect Fireflies, You Are a Lantern, Ascend Buildings, Have Fun. And those were the three titles that were submitted to me on Twitter by the creators who so lovingly crafted them during the Ludum Dare weekend. I was really surprised to get three diverse submissions. Lighthouse was an absolutely wonderful puzzle game. I really sunk a lot of time into that. Tiny World War was a great time challenge game. Kept coming back to that to try to beat my score. And I can't say enough about Overpopulous. It is a wonderfully fleshed out and pretty much fully realized game in the sense that it is a very to-the-point, arcadey sort of score challenge. And I really, really loved that game. It is definitely my favorite of the three, but that is not to diminish the other two. I recommend that you play them all and you leave comments for these wonderful creators on their game pages at ludumdare.com. Calm. Now let's get right into my picks. But first, a word of caution. This is not meant to be an absolute definitive list of games. I played about 40, maybe 50 games if I stretch it out, and these are just four that tickled my fancy in one way or another. So if you made a game and you don't see it here and you think it's better than what I'm looking at, well, let me know. Send me a message on Twitter at Big Dave is Cheap. And maybe I will take a look at your game, and maybe I will tell the masses about it. Up first is Phalanx. This comes to us from Arceus? Arceus? Then the pronunciation really isn't that important. This is part of the 48-hour competition, and man, this is a game. I mean, this is a game. This is like a fully fleshed out game. It reminds me a lot of Realm of the Mad God, if you've ever played that. You are a magical man who shoots magic at bad guys. And it's damn good. You collect items, you get upgrades, you upgrade your skills, your abilities, you unlock new magical spells, you descend further into the Fey Realm, into the Faded Dungeon. And man, this is like a freaking complete game here. It really is kind of scary to think that someone made this in 48 hours. Now, the one complaint that I do have is that it doesn't really have as much to do with the theme, Tiny World, as I might like it to, but I can kind of see stretching how they're relating it back to the theme. But the fact of the matter is, this is a badass game. I mean, it's completely and fully realized. It's wonderful. You gotta take a look at it. Definitely put your eyes on Phalanx. That's F-A-E-L-A-N-X. Phalanx. Up next is Microchip from Disco Fish. This is a 48-hour competition entry, and it is a 2D platformer where you are trying to rid a digital system of glitches. And it really plays fantastically. Your character is eating the glitches, and in order to, to move around inside of this digital world, he can place a block in midair that lasts for two or three seconds. You can use that block to get to all the different parts of the level and eat up all those nasty glitches. The thing that struck me the most about Microchip is that even though it only has one level, that level was designed to show off their main mechanics, that being the eating of glitches and the block that you can create. You have to utilize that block in order to move all around the level and collect all the glitches before you finish and win. I really enjoyed this game and they need to work this into a full title with just a little bit of help 
this could really, really be a good game. And I'm really, I'm, I have a giant smile on my face when I say that, and I really mean that. This game really struck me in how it already felt so well done. The only complaint that I have, and it's kind of a minor one, is that the camera constantly zooms in and out and it becomes really, really annoying. But other than that, man, the mechanics are in place, the art style is there, it's right at the level of the indie game 2D platformers that are coming out and have been coming out for the last few years. Really, really has a nice, intelligent hook. This needs to become a full game. Somebody make this now. Now we're moving on to Tiny Domination by Daz. It's another 48-hour competition entry, and it is an ambitious RTS project. You play as little planets trying to take over other little planets. You do this by producing resources, creating defenses, and creating offenses in the form of little ships. You try to control all of the planets on a particular level, and then you win. I sank a lot of time in this game, I have to say right up front, I really played this game for a long, long time. It is really well made, it does get difficult in the later stages, but if you manage your resources and you learn the tactics, you can really have a lot of fun. I mean, this is a really well made 48 hour RTS. It's hard to believe that this was done in that amount of time. But there's a lot of talent that's evident here in the design of this game. I really do enjoy it. Use the tutorial if you decide to play this game. It will help you a lot. But man, this was an enjoyable experience from beginning to end. An ambitious project to make an RTS of this type in a 48-hour competition. But my hat is off to Daz, be you a man, a woman, or a super intelligent alien of some sort. You have my respect, sir, madam, or entity. And now last, but most certainly not least, is Escape from Mini Mars by Adhesion. This was a 72-hour jam entry, and though I will sound like a broken record when I say it, I'm gonna say it anyway. This game was wonderful. It really, really was. And I know you're probably tired of me saying, this game was great, this game was wonderful. But it's true. I'm sorry. Let me tell you a little bit about this game, okay? Because I'm in love with it. And that actually relates to a theme. There's a problem on Mars. That problem is love. Robo-love. The men of Mars have fallen in love with robots. Well, one robot in particular, and that's you. You have to escape from them by running, jumping, and occasionally incinerating them with your genocide-inducing laser beams. And man, it is so on point. The graphics are there, pixel art, retro, 16-bit, loving it. Colorful graphics palette, great side-scrolling adventure. Oh, man. Smile on my face. It's just... <laughs> I don't have words. I happened onto so many wonderful games in this game jam, and I'm so happy to be able to share them with you, especially a game like Escape from Mini Mars. Play this game when you have a minute. It's just wonderful. The music, the art, it's all there. Adhesion as a company, I've never heard of them. I hope that they are uh, out there making things because I want to consume more that they have created. If this is the sort of thing that they create, I want to suckle at their teat 24-7 because Escape from Mini Mars, it's wonderful. So there you have it, folks. Seven wonderful games plucked from the 1402 that were submitted for the Ludum Dare number 23. If you didn't know about LD beforehand, now you do. I hope you head over to their website and you take some time to play some wonderful, wonderful games. Give these guys encouragement by signing up for an account and leaving them feedback on their game page. Judging is still going on for another eight days. You can only judge if you actually created and submitted a title. So most of us out there in the audience won't be able to do any judging, but we can definitely comment. Tell these guys what you like. Encourage them. This is a wonderful event. It is a wonderful experience, and you need to be a part of it. All right, guys. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.